Hello, everyone. I'm Darius Sulem from Inside Scientific, the online environment for life science webinars, virtual events, interviews, and educational content that helps you do your best work. Our industry insight sessions are an exploration of what is new and exciting in the life science industry. We hear directly from industry professionals about the latest and greatest developments that push the boundaries of what science can do when great minds tackle even greater problems. Today, I'm speaking with Dr. Amy Shang, a technical account manager at Sina Biological. Amy is going to share how nanobodies are emerging as important tools for tumor diagnosis and treatment. Nanobodies are small, simple to apply to humans, stable, and are expected to revolutionize the antibody-based drug therapies in a wide range of pathological conditions, cancer immunotherapy especially. Let's find out what exciting new industry insight Sinobiological can give us today. Hello, Amy. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Darius. Thank you for having me. I'm going to jump right into the first question here, Mm -hmm. if you're ready. Yes. So what are nanobodies and how are they used? Um, Yes, uh, nanobodies are single domain antibodies. They are discovered nearly 30 years ago. They are found in a lot of interesting animals such as alpacas, llamas, and cartilaginous fish like sharks and rays. Structurally, unlike normal IgG antibodies from human or mice that contain both heavy chain and light chains, These single domain antibodies, they do not have light chains. They bind to the antigen through the single and terminal domain VHH, and they do not have CH1 domain. Therefore, these single domain antibodies with only the VHH are currently the smallest naturally derived antigen binding fragments. Thus, the name uh, nanobody, and I guess currently smaller than that would be nobody. (laughs) Their applications have been explored in a wide range of pathologic conditions um, like CNS diseases, infectious diseases, and um, oncological and inflammatory diseases. Uh, would like to point out that they are widely used in field of tumor diagnosis and therapeutics. Besides treating human diseases, um, scientists also apply nanobodies in detection and fight off plant pathogens in agriculture. And moreover, some VHH are developed to detect small molecules for environmental monitoring. Um, VHH technology is indeed among the most exciting ones in antibody fields. Amazing. Nanobodies always have sounded like some kind of futuristic technology, but they are clearly real and they are clearly being used in a number of, uh, of, of conditions here. So maybe you can explain what some of the advantages of nanobodies are over conventional antibodies with the FC domain. Yes, there are many great advantages of nanobodies over the conventional ones. Um, The advantage of them uh, mainly come from their size, structure, um, the development and production protocols. So first of all, as we mentioned, that the VHH is currently the smallest antigen binding fragments. And due to the small size, they can penetrate tissues more efficiently and bind to the antigens that are less accessible to conventional antibodies. And also, and, uh, nanobodies are less immunogenic in humans and more soluble and stable and some of them can bind to antigens at a temperature of 90 degree, and some are functional in presence of ammonia, thiocyanate, or 50% of ethanol. So they're basically like water bears in the antibody field. 
And this would increase the shelf life and make alternative delivery roads such as inhalation. For the antibody development and production point of view, there is no need to sacrifice the animals doing an antibody development to begin with. And there is no need to pair the VH and VL since nanobody has only one single domain, right? Um, and also since the folding and stability of nanobodies is less dependent on the disulfide bond formation, many systems, including prokaryotic, E. coli, and plants, they can be used to express and produce nanobodies. So this would decrease the cost of production greatly. Fantastic. So you kind of dipped into how the nanobodies are sort of developed. Can you maybe expand on that and, and explain how exactly this technology is, is developed? Mm, yes, it all starts with animals. So we know that those single domain antibodies are found in sharks and rays, but it's really hard to catch them, of course. So most of the experiments are done on camelids. Um, some are immunized and some without. So um, if we start with the alpaca, uh, immunized alpaca, blood is collected from the animal first. Then mRNA is extracted from the blood cells to construct cDNA by uh, RT-PCR. The cDNA then is amplified to isolate the VHH genes that are got, get incorporated into plasmids. Then uh, researchers construct the VHH library from uh, bacterial phage and pan the library for uh, desired binders to if they have like a target uh, protein to start with. After the good binders are obtained, uh, we do sequencing to get the actual sequences of the nanobodies, and then we reconstruct to express and purify them. The final nanobody products are, uh, of course, validated in various assays to determine their stability, their affinity, and their specificity, etc. Amazing. Now, can you expand on some of the recent applications of the antibodies? Sure, sure. There are over 10 uh, VHH antibodies in preclinical to phase 3 validation stage. I um, would like to point out that, um, especially slightly before the pandemic, the first nanobody drug, caplazizumab, um, uh, it's a bivalent anti-WF nanobody for treating rare blood clotting disorders, have received EMA and FDA approval, and it got entered the market this year. Um, this antibody drug is consists of two identical humanized uh, v- single variable domains and they connected by a short linker. Um, it is approved to treat acquired thrombonic, thrombothapinic pupra together with the plasma exchange and immunosuppression. Um, basically, the function is like it acts by blocking platelet aggregation, and it is showing that in phase three clinical, more than fifty percent of the patients with tested in, in oh, sorry, more than fifty percent of the tested individuals has reached a normal um, platelet count. Um, another interesting um, nanobody drug is a bispecific nanobody called. Azoralizumab. Um, it is developed by linking two humanized anti TNF VHH linked to another anti HSA VHH. This is under review by Japan PMDA. Um, this by multivalent antibody is meant to treat rheumatoid arthritis. According to the phase two and three results, ozorelizumab significantly reduced the signs and symptoms in patients with active RA, um, and this improvement can be seen as early as day three as injection. Um, There are many biotech companies and institutes are investing in VHH development, and we can definitely expect more emergent diagnostic or or therapeutic uh, toys from uh, this field. Fantastic. So we've discussed a little bit about uh, what the current applications are and some of the the current developments. Um, 
both clinical and otherwise. So can you tell me what's next in the future for nanobody development and applications? Um, so for antibody development, it is still quite a young field. You can see that the compared numbers, so there are more than 130 therapeutic monoclonal antibodies got approved, but only one nanobody so far got approved yet. Um, a lot of studies are in phase one and two, and even before that, many researchers are in the very initial stage of screening, uh, good binders, increasing binding affinity, doing humanization of the nanobodies or doing antibody engineering, etc. Um, I think it's probably due to the lack of restricted IP on the original hybridoma technologies and so much easier to get access to a mouse for immunization. So the conventional antibody technology development has boomed so much, um, even though we discussed that nanobodies have a lot of great advantages over the conventional ones. Um, it is unlikely that, truly unlikely, we can have alpaca farms sitting right close to the big pharma or, or about tech incubators, right? Um, but however, with contract research organizations, it is getting easier and easier to immunize uh, animals such as llamas or alpacas and obtain the initial set of libraries for screening. Um, this would make definitely make more candidates for different applications. Fantastic. Faster science seems to be the way forward for sure. What role does Cenobiological play when it comes to nanobodies? Um, Cenobiological has independently developed and established a nanobody platform with a storage capacity of 10 to 8 and 10 to 9. Um, through this platform, the candidate antibodies of the uh, drugable target uh, PDL1 was successfully obtained with competitive screening. Um, the affinity of this antibody is comparable to that of the positive control antibodies we have shown in our experiments. Uh, while it's blocking and cell activities were shown to be even superior to those of the positive controls. Um, we also produce uh, nanobodies through CRO program for our customers. So we only need amino acid sequence to start and we'll perform gene synthesis, vector construction, transformation and transfection and purification. Uh, we have launched many high throughput production for screening pur purposes. Um, in this kind of production, the small amount of nanobodies are produced and up to 1,000 constructs per batch within three to four weeks. Um, this way, scientists can perform screening on a large list of candidates and only pick ones with good yield, um, good stability, and good binding um, uh, characteristics. Many of the constructs are um, bispecific and, or tri-specific. And once the good candidates are picked, we can then launch scale-up production to fulfill the characterization experiments. So um, to sum up, we are able to help the researchers to develop the best and nanobodies for the applications by supplying the reagents and offering the screening and characterization services to them. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Amy, for your for your time and insights. It was a pleasure to have you with us. And I feel like every time uh, someone from Cena Biological comes on this show, I, I learn so much about what you guys are doing. And it's always so cool to hear about your, the technology that you have. So thank you once again for, for stopping in. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. If you want to learn more about Xenobiological and what they can offer researchers, nanobodies or otherwise, check out the information in this episode's show notes. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Industry Insights and that you'll tune into future episodes where industry professionals, just like you, answer questions about their work and how their companies share science. Don't forget to subscribe.